What is up, ladies and gentlemen? But most of all, you ladies out there, thanks for clicking on another episode of Break the Silence. I am your host, Cyborg. NBA Finals Rematch. Split cow! Un- Believable night in the NBA. We got to watch a finals rematch between the Boston Celtics and the Golden State Warriors. And every time these two teams play, it is heated, it is electric, and it is entertaining for all of us NBA fans out there. Tonight, the Boston Celtics finally got a win against the Golden State Warriors. They played a couple weeks ago, and the Golden State Warriors won 123 to 107. But tonight, the Boston Celtics won in overtime. 121 to 118. There's so much to break it down, break down about this game and also about both of these teams. The Boston Celtics are number one in the Eastern Conference and have won eight games in a row, uh, bringing their record to 35 and 12. The Golden State Warriors do fall to 22 and 23 with this loss. But as many of you know, I am not out on the Warriors. I think what they proved tonight is that when they're healthy and when they're whole, they can compete with anybody in the NBA because the Celtics team is rolling and the Golden State Warriors went into their place and played at a high level. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, also, those Golden State Warriors jerseys, the one with the roses, unbelievable. I'm curious, do you Golden State Warriors fans like those as much as I do? Because I think those are sweet. But let's talk about this game because we got some awesome performances from Jason Tatum, from Steph Curry as always. Um, and then Jalen Brown had his first game back from his injury. The Celtics got a lot of production from a lot of guys. And I think the big key is the addition of Malcolm Brogdon. We're going to break all that down. Before we get into it, please take a second to like and subscribe to the channel. You can see how close we are to 1,000 subscribers. And that's so crazy. So close. I can almost, I can taste it. I can taste it. And it's yummy. No, uh, that was a little creepy. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but yes, please take a second to subscribe to the channel. We're grinding. We're growing over here, posting a ton of NBA content. So take a second to do so. But let's get in to the game. So the Boston Celtics, as we know, are number one in, in offense in the entire NBA in offensive rating. And they're now number six in defensive rating. So they were struggling a little bit to start the season defensively. Uh, but they're starting to really get that rolling. And that's led to them winning these last eight games in a row. And Boston has pretty much held on to the one seed for the majority of this season. They came out on a vengeance, and I was worried about tonight's game. The reason being is that uh, sometimes it feels like the Warriors are in the Celtics' head. When you watch the game, it feels like they're, the Celtics are trying so hard to get over that hump and finally get past the demon that is the Golden State Warriors to them. And Tatum, sometimes at times throughout this game, struggled. And honestly, shooting-wise... He really struggled. He was 9 of 27, which is 33%. But he had 34 points and 19 rebounds. That's unbelievable. He had seven turnovers. What did we watch last year in the NBA Finals? That the Celtics turned the ball over at a super high clip. And that's partly, um, partly credit to the Golden State Warrior defense. But it's also the Boston Celtics play really, really tight against the Golden State Warriors in these moments. They... They, uh, <laughs> it's just starting to get in their head. And once it gets in someone's head, Jason Tatum had the worst series of his entire NBA career. And, you know, he's trying to overcome that. So tonight he did a lot of things really well, made some big plays down the stretch, but he also made three crucial turnovers at the end of the fourth quarter that almost allowed the Golden State Warriors to win this basketball game. So let's talk about the Malcolm Brogdon edition. One of the big things we saw last year in this series in particular was that the Celtics were playing drop coverage against Steph Curry. And what is drop coverage if you're not familiar with the term? It's that when the screener comes, because most of the NBA is played uh, with, a, with a guy handling the basketball on a screener coming up top. It's the way the Warriors play. It's the way the Mavericks play. It's the way that a lot of NBA teams play basketball is that they'll have a guy come up, specifically with the Warriors, it's usually Draymond Green, Kevon Looney, but come up, set a screen, and off that screen, you have an option. A lot of teams in the NBA like to switch. Well, when the Celtics are playing with Robert Williams and Al Horford, they did, and even Daniel Tice at times, they did not want to switch that action. They instead tried to play a drop coverage, meaning that the big man would then drop back, which would leave Steph pretty much a wide-open three-point shot, and it was frustrating me so much last year in the NBA Finals because the Celtics just couldn't figure out how to defend it. Well, tonight and what we saw 
uh, now with this new lineup is that when you're playing with Brogdon, Smart, Tatum, Brown, and Horford, you can switch all five of those guys, taking out that drop coverage nonsense that just does not work against Steph Curry. And we saw it on the final possession of regulation when Al Horford switched on to Steph Curry. He forced Steph Curry into a somewhat uh, into a difficult shot. And, you know, Steph Curry can still hit those. But the worst thing you can do is just give him wide open shots all night. So the addition of Malcolm Brogdon to this team's defense has been so valuable to the Boston Celtics. And I think in big games, when you're playing against a team that can really shoot, that has guards that can shoot, I think that'll really uh, be a big deal going forward, especially for the Boston Celtics. So Jason Tatum this season playing at an MVP level. Uh, Jalen Brown had 16 tonight. Marcus Smart really came out to play, had 18. Robert Williams had 14 and 11. Al Horford had maybe his best game of the season at 20 and 10. Um, Mark uh, Jalen Brown, I want to talk briefly. I think he... He has been known to go to the coaches in big games and say, I want to guard that guy. And tonight he went up to his coaches and he said, I want to guard Steph Curry. And he did a heck of a job on Steph Curry. And obviously Steph is still good enough to where he can get his when <laughs> at any given night. Uh, but he made it difficult on Steph all night. Steph was 9 of 25, still had 29 points. But if you could at least make it to where Steph is a little inefficient because he's a guy whose efficiency is through the roof. If you can make it a little difficult on him, that's really all you can ask. And Steph was 6 of 18 from 3. 18 three-pointers is so many. That's so crazy. Um, on the Warrior side, I want to talk briefly about them as well. Uh, Clay Thompson is playing so much better than he was at the beginning of the season. I think they showed a stat in January. He's averaging 32 a game. And then you just saw as the months went along, Clay Thompson's average was going up. And that is that is a huge piece to this Golden State Warriors team is getting production that they were getting from Klay Thompson, from Andrew Wiggins, um, Draymond Green, you know, kind of provide stuff in other ways. But tonight he played a very good game at 11, 13, and 9. And honestly, I'm not the biggest Draymond Green fan in the world as far as, uh, you know, as many of you know, I am a Celtics fan. So Draymond Green, he's so hard to root against. Um, but... I'm also objective and realize how much value he brings to the team and how much value he brings to Steph Curry and helping him get good looks and doing some of the dirty work and bringing some of the passion that that team needed. Now, the Golden State Warriors on the road this year, 5-18, and 18, which is really mind-boggling um, how good they are at home and how poor they are on the road. They... Um, I don't know if there's ever been a discrepancy as wide as that is. We'll have to see at the end of the season if they're able to to break some sort of record there. But the reality is the Golden State Warriors are only a game and a half out of the five seed in the Western Conference. So they are right there to being right back in contention. And if you're in a playoff series against Steph Curry and this Warriors team, you got to feel nervous. you got to feel like that team has a real, real shot. So don't count the Warriors out. Don't write them off. No one's doing that. Um... The thing that I am a little concerned about is that their bench production, specifically tonight, gave you six points from Dante DiVincenzo, two from Kevon Looney, and two from Anthony Lamb. Getting 10 points off your bench is, it's tough. It's tough to win in the NBA relying so much on your starting lineup. And the thing that they thought they were getting is some of these young guys, the Moses Moody, James Wiseman, Jonathan Kaminga, they thought they were going to get more production from those guys. And, and to be quite frank, they just didn't quite develop this the, to the level that the Warriors were hoping that they would <laughs> develop. So um, something to keep your eye on with the Warriors. Will they make a mood, move before the trade deadline? Will you trade some of those young guys that maybe have potential to be good? Will you trade those for guys that can win right now and try to maximize the last few years you have of Steph Curry? And, you know, Draymond Green might be gone after this year. I believe he's a free agent. So so much to think about when you're the Warriors. When you're the Warriors front office, do you try to make a move to go for the NBA Finals? As far as the Boston Celtics go, they just need to keep developing. And in these big moments, they need to make sure they're not turning the basketball over. We talked about it ad nauseum in so many videos last year that when the Celtics had 16 or more turnovers, they lost almost every game in the playoffs last year. And when they didn't turn the ball over, they were almost unbeatable. It's because they're... they're um, defense is so good at the half court and it's pretty porous in the fast break. So when they turn the ball over and aren't able to get back and get set on defense, 
then they really struggle. And that just makes a lot of sense why your defense would be worse in the fast break. But when the Celtics turn the ball over to high clip, they don't allow their strength of their team, which is their half court defense to develop. They got to make sure they're making good decisions. And when Tatum gets tight down the stretch, he can sometimes get a little sloppy with the basketball. And that's why he had 100 turnovers in the playoffs last year. But all in all, Celtics team's playing unbelievable. They have a firm control of the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. The Bucks are beat up. Nets are beat up. Uh, Cavs, have, you know, kind of had guys in and out and are, are still trying to find themselves. Sixers are getting rolling a little bit, but um, started the season really slow. So be really interesting to watch going forward. Both of these teams will will be in the playoffs. Both these teams will be contenders, and I would not want to play either of these teams in playoff series. That's all we got for you about this game. Super entertaining to watch. We're going to keep grinding videos, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Sabregal.